incubators for shape-changing interfaces by Li Ningyao, Ji Fai Wu, Xinji Cheng, Helene Steiner, Wen Wang, Guan Yu Wang, and Hiroshi Ishii from the Tangible Media Group at MIT. And um, I want to remind you that you can vote for best papers in your app. So please, if you, if you like a talk, just press a button. You can vote for as many talks as you like. Um, this paper got a best paper honorable mention, actually. So congratulations. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to your talk. Bacteria have existed very early from the uh, history of life on Earth. Human beings have been having a love affair with bacteria, and a large portion of the story actually coming from fermented food. Um, there are beer, wine, bread, yogurt, and even kimchi from the country where we are standing at now. What you're looking at the picture is a special bacteria called natto bacteria. It is deeply rooted into the Japanese history and culture. Almost a thousand years ago, a Japanese samurai accidentally found this bacteria when he was in a battle, and it was actually from the dry rice stalk. Since then, Japanese have been using this bacteria to ferment special food, and they call this food natto food. Last year, as well as accidentally, we found another new feature of this Asian bacteria. We call it hygromorphic behavior. What does it mean? It, it basically transforms with the change in relative humidity around the environment. When the environment is, is getting uh, more humid, it will change and enlarge its body size. And when we lower the relative humidity around the environment, the cell will shrink. And in a sense, it is a nanosensor and nanoactuator by itself. However, the transformational behavior happens at a nanoscale. So we start to think, how can we enlarge the transformation effects and create our own biohybrid film to make it usable in a human computer interface context? This video illustrates how we are using and using this bacteria and constructing our biohybrid film. As you see, we can deposit thousands of these little bacteria on top of the inert film, uh, which is flexible as well. In this way, we are able to uh, in a scale up, a nano scale transformation into a macro scale bending behavior. In this talk, we would focus on a few aspects of this biohybrid film. First, we'd like to introduce our process of culturing the cells in a wet lab, and we will introduce our uh, study of this single cell transformational behavior. Following that, we will introduce our design and fabrication of the transformative biohybrid films. And along this process, we developed a software design and simulation platform. And by the end, we would love to introduce a few applications that we think can best demonstrate the potential of this nano actuator for the use of designing shape-changing interfaces of the future. In brief, we are trying to incorporate a nature-engineered material into a human-engineered biohybrid film. We call our project Biologic. Um, as you can see, there are people from a diverse background who are working on this project, and each one of us is equally important to make today's presentation happen. Um, we will study from the introduction of cell study and culture. We uh, culture our cells from a biosafety level one lab, and we divide the whole process into three steps. There are cell culture, cell purification, and by the end, cell dilution. As you can see, most of the equipments we've been using are from the very standard biosafety level one lab. And by the end, we are able to create this cell water solution uh, with the desired optical density. It is a very easy process, and I believe anyone here can learn it within a few days. 
And with the help of bioengineering department at MIT, we are able to access a dark field microscope and observe the transformation of this little nano actuator in real. As you see, when we modulate the relative humidity around the cell from 0% to 100%, we can observe a over 11% of elongation along the longitude axis of the cell. And we hypothesized the mechanism uh, of how the cell actuator work is due to the protein contents. In a dried natto cell, there are over 60% of the weight is due to the protein. However, the loosely packed cell structure can better assist the water penetration and regaining through the hygromorphic process. So as we observe the hygromorphic behavior of the single um, uh, natto cell, we start to uh, scale it up by uh, fabricating a biohybrid bio film and uh, conduct a mechanical characterization in, on it. So a biohybrid film is a thin film that contains a uh, sub soft substrate, usually it's a latex used in this paper, and also the cell layer. Uh, initially, when we, after we uh, obtain the cell water solution from the wet lab, we can deposit on the soft substrate. Uh, the substrate will be still flat uh, as all the cells are swell in the water. As the water evaporates, the cells will start to uh, um, shrink and create a uh, pulling force together to pull the base layer towards the size of the cell layer. And uh, after that, when we change the humidity uh, uh, environment, and then we will have this biofilm respond to humidity by releasing and uh, bending. So we conducted two mechanical characterization on this. The first one, we're looking at how the bending curvature uh, 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 changes versus the relative humidity. As you can see from the graph, the change is pretty linear. We also observed that uh, as we increase the layer of the cells, uh, we can uh, gain a uh, larger bending, uh, bending angle. Responding time is also something that we care about very much if we want to use the cell in an interactive system. So as you can see here, the biohybrid films start to react to the humidity change actually in only a few milliseconds and reaches maximum bending angle at five seconds. We also observe that uh, the thicker the layer is, the responding time will be uh, expanding uh, correspondingly. So based on the characterization, we uh, uh, built a software simulation platform for us to better uh, design and predict the um, uh, different geometries, uh, uh, shape changing, and also predict its um, uh, responding time and the responding angle. Also, the software system uh, serves as a visual reference for us to design more complex shape changing primitives, which we're going to explain later. So on the fabrication side, uh, we can uh, deposit the cell on the substrate by just manually pipetting on it. But if we want to achieve a precise control of the uh, uh, biofilm uh, uh, performance, we need to build our own uh, digital fabrication process. In this paper, we present a uh, inkjet printing process and atom atomizing print print uh, process. For the, uh, so for the inkjet printing, we... Um, we customize a uh, bio inkjet print, uh, printer by using a uh, uh, com commercially available desktop CNC machine and replace its drill head with a um, um, uh, uh, print, uh, inkjet print head. So the, print si uh, the printing process including ultrasonic cleaning and cell loading and uh, installing the print head on the printer and uh, harvest the print once you finish the finishing it. So you can see here the transformation will be much uniform than just manually pipetting. The second one we're looking at is that how can we create large scale shape changing, especially texture changing with the uh, atomizer. So we con connect the atomizer on the large scale CNC machine and uh, uh, in this case we can create a large scale transformation uh, um, uh, biofilm. So this approach compared to the previous one is less flexible if you want to change the transformation pattern, but it will be more faster if you already have a desired transformation pattern and you want to print it in a large scale. So in our paper, we will have a more detailed um, uh, explanation how the fit rate of the motor and the, uh, uh, and the flow rate of the print head relate to the, how much uh, amount of cell you can print on the, on the, on the substrate. And uh, after, on the third level, we start to think about how can we use the bending behavior of the biofilm to create more complex transformation primitives. 
So the bending curvature, uh, we actually, uh, the bending uh, behavior, we actually have two types. So if we deposit the cell evenly on the substrate, we can get a uh, uniform curved bending. And if we selectively deposit in the cell on the surface with the uh, uh, enhancement on the substrate, we can get an uh, angular bending. With these two types of uh, bending, be uh, bending behavior, we are able to create one-dimensional linear transformation, two-dimensional expansion and contraction, two point five D texture change. This is specially uh, can be fabricated by the atomizing process that we mentioned before. And finally, a three-dimensional folding. In this case, we design three type of tetrahedron that can either fold in its sides uh, sequentially or make changing its height or creating a hole in the middle. Let's move on to applications. What can we do with all this uh, different kind of transformation behavior? We see our material especially useful when human be behaviors can introduce the change in relative humidity. And in this case, our NATO cells are both sensors and actuators. Um, the first application would, we would love to introduce is called second skin. We can tune the sensitivity of the film and make it react to the body condition. If you think about how our skin works, it, uh, it, it sends the, the excessive heat generated by the body and, uh, and, uh, mo and automatically regulates the body temperature through the process of sweating. However, our traditional clothes really prevent this process with, uh, from happening. With the biohybrid film, we are able to create a second skin that can collaboratively work together with our skin and uh, self-regulate our body temperature. And here we use a parametric design method. We map um, the design of our flapping pattern to, uh, with the body heat and sweat map. So we are able to design flaps um, based on the distribution of the heat and sweat. So the region where sweat the most will have the biggest flap, and uh, the region sweat less will have smaller openings. Um, and the flap will usually Flap will keep being flat, and uh, it opens up when you sweat. Here we are imagining a portable ecology. It's an ecology between your body and clothes, as well as an ecology between human and the natural natto cells as two living organisms. And the second application we want to uh, we want to show is a responsive lampshade. So here we demonstrate how we can scale up a single unit transformation into a larger, more complex interface. As you turn on the light, um, the heating generated by the light bulb can actuate those independent origami units and make a dynamic uh, lampshade as well as a dynamic lighting pattern on the, on the floor and on the wall. The third application is related to artificial plants. If we think about the nature, the plants grow and die as, uh, as the natural fraud process is going on and usually it's beyond the human wish and human manipulation. However, here we are trying to imagine how we can create interactive plants that can respond and relate to the human behavior. Um, by depositing the cells along the natural uh, uh, vein system of the leaves, we are able to mimic the organic transformation of the living, uh, living leaves. In this case, we are able to, to design this little tea bags. The leaves can sense the steam generated by the hot water and automatically open up uh, to remind you your tea is ready. And by combining other functional material together with this living cell, you are able to create more, uh, more dynamic interfaces. Here we are able to design this flower that blossoms um, through shape as well as through color. The second type of interaction we consider our material useful is through the integrating of an external control system together, to, uh, together with our NATO cell. So here the NATO cell only functions as an actuator. However, the sensing can be, can be different rather than sensing the uh, moisture change. So by incorporating a screen printing process, we are able to design this composite that incorporates both the cells and also a heating circuit on board. And by, um, by turning on and off an electrical signal, now you can turn, and on, turn on and off the actuation as well. 
Here, there is a li little gift card that, that are designed to animate the toy through folding and unfolding the corner um, of, the, of, of the gift card platform. If we look at all the related work in large, there are a huge group of hygromorphic materials in both the natural world and also man-made world. We believe the natto cell is the first independent living organisms that are found um, in nature and have been used as a nano-actuator. And comparing with all the synthesized hygromorphic material, um, our actuator is grown rather than built, so it's ecologically friendly and biocompatible. And surprisingly, the performance is almost as good as um, the, mo the, the best working synthesized material that human beings have been found so far. So it has been gaining more uh, increasing interest and uh, attention to use smart material um, in HCI application. Uh, if we look at most, actually most of the work um, are uh, focusing on how to directly uh, use the off-the-shelf smart material directly on the HCI application. As a designer, we actually would like to explore a, a larger design possibilities by uh, looking at how can we uh, design the material from the hierarchical structure um, so that we, when we're designing the structure of the material, we're also embedding the interaction in it. This is how we interpret uh, the human material interaction. And uh, following by this framework, we actually have been working on a series of projects that looks at how the material can output dynamic shapes, stiffness, weight, color, etc. And uh, we call it programmable materials. And uh, we will have an in-depth discussion uh, in the Kai course Beyond Tangibles on Thursday. Uh, we will also discuss our um, larger research agenda, Radical Atoms in Tangible Media Group. Uh, you are welcome to join. So back to the bacteria. Um, from biology to HCI, from something to use that something we can, or from something to eat, that we eat to something that we can use, um, this shift of concept requires us not only to understand the scientific fact of how the cell's hygro hygromorphic, be uh, hygromorphic behavior is, um, to analyze and predict the biofilm's actuation performances, but also how to appropriate those in the um, uh, everyday interaction uh, scenario where electronics or wires are not desired. It requires us to look beyond the current discipline and looking for new opportunities that might already exist thousands of years. And uh, it has been a really amazing collaboration among people from a design, science, and engineering background working together with Mother Nature's ancient creation to create the next generation of uh, interfaces. And uh, with all of that, uh, we would like to invite the rest of the team on the stage and happy to take questions. So for questions, we have a microphone up there. Please walk up there and ask the questions. We have time for a few questions. I'll go first. <laughs> Roll Vertigal, Queen's University Human Media Lab. Uh, fantastic work. I really, really love this uh, amazing uh, look into the future. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you envision uh, putting this on, for example, a more of an active matrix style substrate? Um, would it require small channels of um, hydraulics or something like that? And let's say you want to make a surface that does kind of a pixelated um, action. Yes, that's, our, that's the first thing. When we started to work with the hygromorphic material, we thought, yes, we can introduce onboard microfluidics. Yeah. So we can, exactly, it's a brilliant idea. Uh, we've been working on that a little bit on the side. But on the other hand, we are also thinking if you really do point-to-point -point trigger, then what's the difference uh, in term, uh, if you compare this actuator with other any kinds of actuator reacts to any kind of stimuli. So here we are also, on one hand, we try to have the maximum controllability, yeah. but on the other hand, we are trying to find the right application with a much simplified uh, control and material system. If you find the right stimuli type, for example, in our case, 